you would be forgiven for presuming that the nations of Africa didn't take part in the 1418 war. Their involvement has become a forgotten history, overshadowed by the conflicts between the European powers. And yet the very first shot by British forces on land was taken in Africa by an African. And the very last engagement between British and German forces again took place on the African continent. Over two million Africans served in British, French and German forces. Many lost their lives, and all of them had experiences that were shaped by the racism of the 19th and early 20th centuries. 1418 now, the UK Arts Programme for the First World War Centenary is drawing attention to the Africans who served with three major art commissions. When we learn history, we can therefore deal with the problems, you know, of the present. One of the important reasons for doing it is to offer a very necessary corrective, which is that you know, people of colour, African and Asian, did fight in this war. I suppose the central energy came from an awareness of my own ignorance of what Africa was in the First World War. I'm here at Nuffield Southampton Theatre to find out more about the SS Mendy disaster of 1917. The Mendy tragedy took place in the English Channel, just a few miles from this theatre. South Africa's Isango Ensemble perform SS Mendy, Dancing the Death Drill, a musical theatre piece about the events surrounding the sinking of the SS Mendy, where tragically 600 South Africans lost their lives. Where does the title of this piece come from? It comes from a book by Fred Kamalu, who's a South African writer. It's about that final moment as the ship sank and the men came together to dance, to celebrate themselves. What has been the difficulties taking this story that has such meaning and resonance for South Africans and bringing it to the stage? It's tempering with the spirit of the dead. We are very scared of that. But we came to a conclusion that we wanted to honor the man in our small way. We're not the government, we're not historians, we're artists. So how better can we do that? And so we, we chose this way. To bring the level of musicality to this very difficult tragedy from a century ago. How did you bring those two things together? Because of our emotional connection to the story, the music sort of springs up from that, and so therefore it, it's not guided. It's sort of, it sort of guides itself and it fits itself uh, however way it wants to. And, 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 and sometimes we really don't have control over that. So you feel that the man who died a century ago, not far from where we are, their spirits are somehow with us. Definitely, definitely. We have felt it and we feel it all the time. It's extremely moving to have had this opportunity of coming here. This piece is probably emotionally the hardest that I have certainly done. In the East End of London, filmmaker and artist John Acomfra is also exploring the global aspects of the First World War. His piece, African Soldier, is a multi-screen installation using archive material and newly filmed sequences. What I've been planning to do was to see if I could get together as much information, images as possible on the very complicated role the soldiers of African origin played in the First World War. The minute you commit to something that's single screen, you're in effect telling a story. You're constructing a narrative. I wanted to do something more impressionistic. I wanted to do something that had a feel of a collage, had a feel of multiplicity. And it seemed best to find a form that kind of mimicked that multiplicity. For a comfort, this exploration of the past has real resonance in the present day. In effect, strangers and outsiders, quote-unquote, the very people who now many, many millions of us voted to exclude 
in this Brexit project, the very people we're trying to exclude were at some point involved in saving this place. At Tate Modern's Turbine Hall, the gallery is hosting the world premiere of a performance piece by South African artist William Kentridge. Me, me. Kentridge has created a remarkable multimedia performance piece, The Head and the Load. The piece aims to tell the story of the over a million African porters and carriers who served British, French and German forces during the First World War. In the piece, William Kentridge uses shadow play, animated projections, dance and music to create a collage of rich imagery, a kind of moving three-dimensional painting. The title The Head and the Load comes from a Ghanaian proverb, which is the head and the load are the troubles of the neck. And obviously in this it's worth literally the loads that the African carriers had to carrier because of tsetse flies killing all oxen and horses, beasts of burden couldn't be used and people actually had to carry the machine guns, the dismantled cannons, the dismantled boats, their provisions on their heads or their shoulders. So it's the physical load but it's also of course the historical load of colonialism in Africa and the, the psychic load of where do I fit in? Do I want to be part of a European elite? Do I want to res retreat from it and stay just in my village? It's, all of those questions are encapsulated in the title. What do you hope will be the reaction to this piece, a piece that discusses a little known history? Well, the thing that's been a surprise is the strong emotional resonance that it has for people. It's one thing to be interested or to be astonished at the virtuosity of a lot of the dancers and singers and musicians, but that it has a strong emotional effect, and that's partly an emotion of my God, this is a history I should have known that I don't know or didn't know. Kentridge's visual and oral assault on the audience, combined with the piece's fragmented narrative, creates a whole that leaves the audience breathless at its conclusion. What do you think the importance of this story is a century after the First World War? It teaches Europeans that, in a simple way, Africans are humans. And it hurts for me to be saying this in this day and age, but I feel like it's still the same thing, you know. They are as human as anyone. And I think if we get that here, you know, we'll start to deal with all issues. You will deal with it differently if you understand that those people are people. The memory of the First World War isn't just about a convenient, one that says, oh, we saved ourselves. There were people, you know, 10,000 miles away from here who were citizens of this place. And many of them gave their lives for this place. So it's just important to, to keep remembering that. When I started discovering there were these sort of million casualties in Africa, I thought, what is it that's both been hidden from me and what was I hiding from myself? I was so filled with this conventional image of the First World War. It's a sad fact that in the telling of history, there are multiple truths, and the story of the First World War is no different. Perhaps one can forgive historians for telling the broader story of the tragedy of the European people. But in these three pieces by contemporary artists, we can at last experience the huge contribution and human sacrifice made by black and Asian people in the 1418 war and see it as a truly global event. Yeah.